Take a second to recognize the bowlers walking the lanes today. If there was a gold standard in the sport, you're looking at it. 114. Won the wildest dreams. Yeah, you heard me right. 114 titles between them. 30 major championships. A great Jason Belmonte has done it again. He's done it. Anthony Simonson, a champion again. They've reached every height, checked every box. But it's not every day you get the privilege to represent your country at this level. Now that's something special. Two teams, eight of the very best to do it on the planet. It's the USA versus the world. Next on Fox. Today we start a great week of shows from Bolero Wauwatosa. It's the Guaranteed Rate World Series of Bowling. We kick off this fantastic event with the return of USA versus the world. Two shows in a team format today here on Fox. And tomorrow on FS1, whoever gets to eight points wins the Hall of Fame Cup. Welcome, bowling fans of suburban Milwaukee. It's great to have with us, Dave Ryan, with bowling royalty here, Hall of Famers Chris Barnes, and, of course, Randy Peterson. RP, let's start with you. How excited are you? And the fans are excited to see you, as always. How pumped are you, RP, that USA versus the world is back? I mean, I, I'm so glad that this event is back. When you're featuring eight of the greatest players from around the world, how can you not get excited about that? You know, the world of bowling is alive and well, and this proves it. This has got a Ryder Cup feel to it, and they, I don't think there's anything like representing your country in any sport, and nobody would know that better than my partner right here, Chris Barnes. I think that's a great point, Randy. Some of most cherished memories in our bowling have to do with team bowling and bowling for my country. And so uh, having three guys to cheer for you for a change instead of being the only one happy when you win has a big part of this. You have the pride of bowling for your country, one side has pride of bowling for the world. And don't dismiss the personal pride factor in this. There's a lot of grudge matches out here today. <laughs> hey, 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 I, I, gotta, I just got to say, I, I mean, it, it's safe to say that the rest of the world has caught up. Oh, absolutely. 20 years ago, I think uh, USA would have been heavily favored. It would be yeah. an upset if the internationals won. Right now, I'm not so sure that the internationals aren't the favorite for this one. We can't wait, fellas. Great bowling is on the way. Four singles matches and total pinfalls. Well, gets a bonus point. We see the matchups head to head. Troop, Svensson, their best friends and roommates, Simo and Belmo, head to head. Two big superstars as well. And then EJ Tackett and Dom Bear at the fourth match as well. The captains now joined by Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, Dave. So, Tommy, on paper, you and your team look almost unbeatable, but this team competition is a completely different animal. So what is your strategy going up against this powerhouse of a team? You know, we're just going to have to communicate a little bit, just like all team events, but I have uh, the two hottest bowlers in the world on my team and uh, a guy that broke the, uh, the money record a couple years ago, so I feel pretty good about the guys I got behind me. Oh, well, good luck to you guys today. And Jason, the last time this event happened, you were actually part of the world team that swept the USA team. So what's going to key, be key for you guys today to make that happen again? I think it's going to be really to just be in the moment. I mean, it's always difficult when you're on the other team's home turf. Uh, the world typically is always uh, on uh, the, the US's turf. But sometimes, you know, the underdogs and that feeling that you get, it, it really does narrow your focus. So I feel like that's what this team is going to bring today. Uh, as Tommy said and, and Chris said in the opening, they are heavily favourites, I think. So it's really up to them to, to lose it and it's up for us to, to steal it from them. All right. Good luck to you guys as well. Thank you. KP, Pelbo, TJ, thanks. USA versus the world. Match one. Here we go. Jones Cooley. Hey, guys. And, and before we get started, I think we have to give a shout out to uh, one of our broadcast partners, Rob Stone. I don't know how old he is. He said, Randy, don't say how old I am on the air. But it is Rob Stone's birthday. Happy birthday to Rob. More on Tommy Jones, a Hall of Famer. Tommy gets us started left lane. Oh. 
not what you want with a 4-6 split. No, he got steep on that one. He dumped it right into the front of the lane, and uh, this surface, a, uh, a well-aged HPL surface, it has a ton of play on it over the years. It's been a big tournament center for a long time. Uh, there's a little early friction out there. You have to clear the front. Well, one for it, guys. Missed them both. I mean, he could have just as easily right, just left the four pin. It would have been nice to catch that. Flat Warren, flat Sam Coy, 31 years old, and went on tour this year. Who knew that? The World Series in Tampa on the Cheetah Pattern Show in 2021. It's really been his coming out party here the last couple of years. He's been around for a little bit, but he has really broke through and, uh, and earned his spot on this world team for this event. Cooley's first shot. Nice trip 10 pin. Cooley using exotic gem to start, but one of the most uh, unusual follow throughs in the game. But I'll tell you what, the way he gets it out of his hand is just amazing. Watch the follow through go in front of his face and to the left. But what he does to a boy, well, watch this rotation and then just the sheer power behind it. He has the ability to make more surfaced bowling balls go sideways down lane than any other player with their thumb in it. Sam grew up in Australia. You see his arsenal. Watching Tommy yeah. Jones among many stars on YouTube. Now he gets to face him. Today here on Fox. Ten pin. Everything but go down. Real similar hit to Tommy Jones' first shot on that same lane, but I Sam agree. just leaves the 10 pin. Would you agree with that, Chris? Do you concur? I concur. All right. It was uh, a little bit behind the, the pocket. I think this left lane hooks a little bit more. I had some inside info from uh, a uh, sibling of mine who bowled on this pair last year in the collegiate event. <laughs> Son. I was going to ask you about that. I <laughs> thought that's what you meant. Yeah. I was waiting for you to clarify. Great bowling uh, family, of course. The Barnes from hey, Texas. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> Four singles matches, guys. We have two doubles matches. That's tomorrow on FS1. Eight points are needed to win. There is a bonus point today for total pinfall. So every shot does count today. It's like a boxing card with tremendous head-to-head -head matchups leading us to the championship tomorrow. Tommy Jones, seven pin. Way better shot, got that one out over the front part of the lane, but uh, super unfortunate break. Tommy Jones using the one on both lanes to start. You can see the tracer just inside a third arrow. And again, uh, not a very good break for TJ here early on. <laughs> There you see the tour average for seven pin conversions. 93.2% of the time it's made every time. You know where we get those great stats, don't you? Where Chris? do we get that, Randy? Okay, Dave. Uh, <laughs> we get that from Lane Talk. For more information, go to lanetalk.com. All right, so TJ getting himself set here in an early 12 pin hole. 44 years old, 23 years on tour. A Hall of Famer. Got seven pin, got the mark. Let's take a look, guys, at today's Brunswick oil pattern, the Carmen Salvino 44-footer. And right away, we see the players playing in and just kind of feathering it to the outside part of the lane. You can see the buildup in the middle, but this pattern real gettable. You can see the blue line. That's going to be Jesper Spence and our lone southpaw. And we'll see him later in the competition. He will be up in match two. Bowen his roommate. That's going to be fun. First time ever on TV, those guys have matched up. Jones on plane. Come on, Tommy. <laughs> wow. Man, three weird hits in a row. Yeah, this carry right here. Kind of reminds me of the Chris Barnes really of old. Watch this. I don't know what's going over there, but there's a lot of action. It looks kind of like uh, a dance party over there on the six pin. <laughs> Too much angle weight in behind it, much like Sam was, oh, but a way different hit. Chris, you, I mean, come on. 
Stop being so particular. Yeah. It's a strike. World Cup winner, 2018. From down under. Jason Belmonte and Sam Cooley from the same state. New South Wales and Australia. Strike for Cooley. World Series of Bowling, we talked about it. It's the 14th guaranteed rate, WSOB. Yeah. We have today's show here on Fox, tomorrow noon Eastern, USA versus the World Final for the Hall of Fame Cup. Cheetah, Scorpion, Shark Championship shows all coming your way. FS1, 7 Eastern, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights. And Sunday here on Fox, noon Eastern, the PBA World Championship, presented by Paps Blue Ribbon. Also streaming on the Fox Sports app. All events here at Bolero, Wauwatosa, here in suburban Milwaukee. The World Championship is a major. Anthony Simonson won the most recent major title, USPC Masters, Allen Park, Michigan, two weeks ago. Well, there's uh, our first double, I think. If I could see the scoreboard, yep, our first double through four and a half, or three and a half frames. But Chris, both players go high on the left lane. Both players obviously make an adjustment because Tommy comes in light, Sam comes in a little light right here. Uh, what do you make of that? I think that's just what these guys do, really. I mean, Tommy's first shot wasn't very good. He made a little move off of it, got way further down the lane and behind it. Cooley trying to get a little more angle. Uh, the first move is moving left quick. I thought it was interesting that Captain Belmonte put Sam out first, who's going to play further left than a lot of the other guys. May not help this pattern a lot. Trip 10 pin for TJ. And cuts it to a 12 pin match here. Next to his fifth frame, looks for the turkey. Well, as what happens occasionally with some of these guys that are a little older, they take a little <laughs> longer to get loose. And uh, and now Tommy's a couple oh. frames in. He's, uh, he's starting to... Uh, Starting to get in his groove a little bit. Yeah, you of all people should know that. I mean, you bowled the World Series this week. It's it's judging, not know. It's not judging. It's knowing. So, uh, yeah. What For clarification, it? Chris and Tommy are very good friends, by the way. Yeah. Oh. Got to two here, guys. Fifth frame, big shot. Okay. I mean, what a match. What a way to kick off the World Series of bowling. I think this is the 14th. If I'm not mistaken, and Chris, uh, you've been a part of all of those. This week, especially brutal um, with, what was it, 60 games in six days? Yeah, the number of games wasn't super long, but the blocks were long. Yeah. They were really uh, difficult the last uh, four days. And so it was a test on the back end of a seven, eight weeks in a row on tour. There's a lot of uh, mental strain as well as, as physical at this point. In Tampa, first career title, an emotional day to be sure for Sam. Win over Chris Prather. Oh. Right lane for Cooley. Oh. Right. oh, the dirty wonder from down under. <laughs> and that was a little dirty right there. I wondered how Sam would respond the first time that Tommy's putting real pressure on him and uh, if that would flip things for him a little bit. He's worked real hard on versatility and being a little softer and getting his ball to slow down even the lane's a little tight. And on the fresh like this, it's the one thing that's really catapulted him from being a good player when the lane's hooked to on the fresh. Well, it, by the way, this isn't his first rodeo either, and the guy's got two titles, and he's bowled 300 on television. So I think he's probably got his sea legs underneath him. Looks for the four-bagger here, guys, to go up by 22 pins, midway point. a little kangaroo kick on the 10 late. We are halfway through match number one here just outside of Milwaukee. The PBA on Fox is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. 
Want to move fast? With Same Day Mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as fast as one day to get you closing on the home of your dreams in just 10 days. Learn more at rate.com. And by Bolero, the number one place to bowl. Party and play with over 325 locations nationwide. Head to bolero.com today to find a center near you. Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, outside Milwaukee. This place is rocking. Here on Fox, USA versus the World, opening the 14th World Series of Bowling. And look at this strike streak we're on here. A total of seven between these two great bowlers. Tommy Jones, Simpsonville, South Carolina steps up. Six frame, down 22, trying to cut it to 12, maybe two, with two more strikes. Looks for the four back. Total pinfall, very important today. Coming in high, baby split, 310. Oh. You're so good out of commercial. You're so good. That's a pretty big <laughs> miss left. Yeah, and that's Tommy's miss now. Oh, for your it, life, is it just gets a little break. steep and it gets his shoulder shut down and it, it gets over the top. And when you say steep, you mean downswing? Yeah, he's downswing already got gets a little steep. He gets a big tall backswing, always has. His legs are fantastic. He's a good, you know, really good athlete. Goes for it. Gets it. Spare the game, sponsored oh. by Guaranteed Rate. Want to get moving fast? With Same Day Mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as little as one business day. Time to get your dream home crazy fast. Learn more at rate.com. Nicely done, Chris. And typically when you get too steep in the downs, when you tend to grab it at the bottom of release, well, right? You do. What causes is your shoulder starts pulling from the top, and your shoulder moves forward. Once your shoulder moves forward, your elbow comes out. People's elbows don't fly. The shoulder goes forward. That makes everything else come over the top. That's what uh, ended my career, Chris. <laughs> and see, this whole time I thought it was my elbow. The last memory I have is of you beating me. So I <laughs> I'm sure you guys had some great head-to-head -head matches. I think I yeah, was, one. I think I was 17. But I don't know. <laughs> it's a big shot for TJ here. Got a uh, seventh frame. He's in trouble. Needs this. Works on a spare. Gets it. A little better. How about just a little disappointed there. TJ is playing the two lanes the same. Uh, Sam has got the left lane hook and one more, thanks to our friends here at Lane Talk. And uh, Sam is laying it down about four left. Uh, I'm sorry, we're using strike track to, uh, to get this information. Two career titles for Sam Cooley. Looks for another strike. Ten pin, no love there. Man. Could have taken a 34 pin lead in the seventh. Randy, show, what, show where he's getting this one back from. Well, I mean, I mean, extremely high rev rate plus that side rotation. And, you know, he can cover a lot of ground. And I think you, you touched on it earlier. You, you made mention of the fact that it made it sound like his ball is super clean through the front part of the lane. And so that enables him to do a couple things, right? It, it helps the ball retain energy so yeah. it can come around the corner. And by doing that, he's able to create some pretty steep angles. Yeah, and it's what you brought up earlier with the unique swing. He has a bigger loop than a lot of the other guys yeah. have, which lets his hand work from the way inside way of the ball. Way inside. And so he creates a ton of rotation, a lot like some of the two-handers do. Yeah. And it, but yet do it with his thumb in it. Yeah. And uh, it makes him it makes him a little more unique, uh, kind of like a West Malat with more reverie. I agree. It's definitely different uh, and unique. And just watch his hand as it rotates around the bowling ball. Ninth year pro, Sam Cooley. That was the end. Eight pin. About a board left at the arrows for Sam Cooley, and that thing hydroplaned. You know, typically on a pattern of any sorts, if you can't miss a board left and get it to the pocket, that's not a good thing. Yeah, it looks like he actually just moved a little bit, maybe over moved, and uh, it, it, that one didn't slow down. And that was his uh, real cross to bear up until his last couple of years, is couldn't get his ball to slow down enough, which is the opposite of most of us. Right. So because he's super clean through the front, he struggles getting it to slow down, whereas my ball hooked to my toes. Yeah. Yeah, basically, yeah. once his ball gets started, it hooks miles. Right. He just got to get it started. Lane's had his shot now, Tay, fine. 
Well, Tommy Jones still in this and can cut the deficit to two with a strike in the eighth and ninth. Lots of international experience for Tommy Jones. Big frame to cut the 12. Four, seven. That was a really good one, actually. Ah. He's had his chances. Yeah, I think that's one of where the bad shot of the commercial break cost him a move. He probably needed to make a move here and didn't get uh, didn't get the warning because the last one wasn't good enough to make a move mm -hmm. off of. Can't move off a bad shot, can he, Chris? <laughs> Guaranteed rate World Series of Oregon got underway last Saturday at the iconic Holler House Lincoln Village neighborhood of South Milwaukee. Oldest sanctioned 10-pin bowling center in the nation. Certified in 1910, the lanes made of real wood and oil. The ball return and pin center operated by hand as well. In the captain's bath, Jason Belmonte knocked off Tommy Jones 231-185 to determine lane choice and lineup selection for today's matches. Chris, you were there. It's Mike really was cool. There. Commissioner Clark was there. Pretty awesome. Event. Yeah, really historic venue. Whoa. How did the nine pin not go through? We go in the front. Well, and I think Sam has kind of trapped him just a little bit by being left of him the whole time. He's starting to see some of that friction and a couple of good shots in a row that both picked up. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Gross. Now, because Belmonte beat Tommy, Tommy had put his lineup out first, and Jason got to match up whatever players he wanted up against Tommy's order. Uh, so Tommy called his own number first, leaving the strength of what he says, the strength of his lineup behind him. And uh, Jason opted to put Cooley out first, who I think is going to play further left than some of the other guys, right. which is interesting. Uh, now Dom will go last as the lowest rev rate on the team. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. Whoa. Uh oh, yeah. hang on a minute. Two, four, ten, split. Hang on, guys. The match just changed. We're not done yet. Foundation frame disaster for Cooley, who's got some work to do here. I didn't see that one coming. He's been able to get his, his ball to, to uh, hook back from about everywhere. He managed to get it to a spot that it, that it wiggled. Uh, last couple shots in that lane. Although look like from lay down. By strike track, it's, that was a pretty good strike to move left. Oh, open frame, almost got the 10. Well. And from a 20-pin lead, down to nine, just like that. A big 180 this late in the match to make it really interesting. Almost popped out the two-pin into the 10, but Sam's not done yet. He can double in the 10th frame and, and grab a point for his team and Tommy Jones needs him not to do that. Tommy still has a chance. Tommy can strike out. Max w score would be 215. If Sam Cooley goes strike spare in the 10th, it's 214. Here's the first possibly Randy got that. <laughs> he did right away, turn away from it. <laughs> He's upset about the open. According to strike track in the ninth frame, he moved three boards left off that last shot, which is a uh, and then two left to lay down on this shot from a shot that went light this time before. How do you know that? Strike track. <laughs> they tell us everything. I just like, I just like hearing you say strike track. All right, strike and two to win. Otherwise, you're saying there's a chance. Yep. Needs this, Cooley. No. Again, another ball that's a bit inside, guys. As we take a look at these numbers. And now Tommy Jones has a chance, but he'll need all three in the 10th frame if Sam covers the 10 pin. So Jones not shut out. There is an opportunity for captain of Team USA here in the 10th frame. Cooley has the 10 pin. To be honest, I don't think Tommy thought this was going to be an opportunity here. When he sat down after the ninth frame, I think he thought this one was over. No, it's not, Chris. Nope. Well, we really win for TJ. He's getting up on the right lane. He's only struck once this entire game on that lane. And that strike coming back in the fourth frame. A little fast eight last time. He's going to move uh, up. 
my move would probably be one. Tommy's is probably going to be at least two. Must strike to have a chance. First of three possibly for Jones. No, not close. That's it. And Cooley wins match one. The world gets the first point. The first team to eight points wins. The roommates, the best friends, guys, are next head ahead. And what makes it even more interesting, they've never met on TV until now. Troops, Svensson, head to head next here on Fox. Welcome back to the Guaranteed Rate World Series of Bowling outside Milwaukee. Dave, Chris, Randy, Kimberly, our entire crew. The world, Sam Cooley, 214-200 win over Tommy Jones. Eight points needed to win. Plus a bonus point today for the highest total pinfall. Cooley, guys, just good enough despite that open in the ninth frame. Next match up, here we go, Troop and Svensson. They are best friends, they are roommates. They are opponents today. Last couple of practice shots here for these two great bowlers. Uh, Chris, we were talking the break. They have met yeah. before internationally, and Jesper has owned Kyle, but he, never on U.S. soil he, the PBA Tour. He first has owned today. Kyle, and Tommy had the list uh, as the loser. He had to post first, and so as soon as Kyle's name came out second, it was an automatic choice for Belmo to put the Iceman up against him, uh, <laughs> see if he can continue this domination. Right. That's it for shots. I see. Kyle former player of the year on the PBA Tour. Years old from North Carolina. Great year in 2021, almost $500,000. A nine-time titles. A confident Kyle is a very dangerous man. But Jesper, for some reason, seems to take a little bit of that away from him. So we'll see if he can overcome it. Even more than his hair is trying to overcome that hairband. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely encroachment. <laughs> Arsenal for Kyle. True. The showman flamboyant gets us started. Looking for help on the 10 pin. The messenger makes no contact. Well, if somebody can certainly change the momentum for the USA team, it's this guy. He is the most charismatic of the group. And uh, and like I say, he gets a little momentum going. We'll see uh, We'll see it on full display here. Yeah, a little flyby by the head pin in front of the 10. Doesn't do him any favors, but, you know, I, I spoke with Belmonte in, in, in regards to his pick with Jesper Svensson, and he said, you know, he's just intimidating. He's the Iceman, 11-time titleist of the PBA Tour. Lots of international experience with Team Europe as well. Two-handed, left-handed sensation with extraordinary rev rate and power. This guy can knock him down. Six pin. A little bit of first jet shot jitters. Serious? I think so. This guy's made a lot of TV, but not a ton of it this year, actually. And I think no matter how many shows you've made, when you haven't made it for a while, the adrenaline's still pumping a little higher. All right, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most nervous, 1 being the least, what number are we talking with Jesper? Uh, for that shot there? Yeah. yeah. The first one was always. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. He'll be at four here. Wow. In another shot. I, the Iceman doesn't show any emotion. <laughs> I mean, but make no mistake about it. He gets a double in here, and you will be wanting to fear the North. So. <laughs> yes, we're going with pitch black, urethane, non-reactive, and that's kind of his. No way. His calling card, yeah. I have to be honest, he's throwing a lot of reactive lately. Left lane for Jesper, guys. Oh, almost a drive at 7-10 split. 
Which has only been made, of course, on TV four times, but the 10 pin stands. Four times, three times by left handers. Mm -hmm. That's pretty bad, Mike. Huh. I wonder why that is, Chris. <laughs> you know, I always heard they had an advantage, but that doesn't seem fair. I think it's a little easier to get it out of the seven pin corner. All right, and let's be clear, folks. Of course, I don't <laughs> feel that way. But growing up as a kid in Southern California, that's all I used to say, right? I mean, I, I know you went through the same thing, so don't even sit there and try to deny it. I, I, I have a left-handed son that I respect tremendously. There you go. There we go. Uh, ironically, <laughs> Jesper out of all these guys has the lowest high gain this season. 288. Yeah. Who would have well, guessed that? The guy throws a million strikes. Right. By the way, you, you know who else is left-handed? Guy sitting next to you, Dave Ryan. Southpaw, baby. Explain some things. <laughs> Couch uh. right lane here, guys. So oh, ring a 10 pin good show. Chris, are you surprised at how deep he is? I know you talked about Sam Cooley and his high rev rate and what he could possibly do to the oil pattern, but I mean, he's way left of where Sam was playing the lanes. Yeah, I think it's just human nature. These guys all try it and, uh, and get left of the guy in front of them. They want the hook to the right of them, they want oil left. Uh, the part of Troop's game that's improved the most over five years ago is his speed control and his ability to play this part of the lane. Uh, he was a top 40 guy before that with the ability to throw it really hard. Now that, uh, now that he can soften up a little bit, he's, he's a danger from everywhere on it. He's going to need his ball to do a couple of the right things, though, because uh, some of that hangover from previous experiences against Jesper may be wearing in. Kyle, sixth. PBA Tour points entering play here today. These best friends have won two doubles titles together, Rob Holman in 17 and 20. But adversaries today. Oh, yeah. 10 back for Kyle. He's curving that absolute. <laughs> there we go. Trying to get just a little bit inside of where Cooley was, who was a little bit inside of TJ. It's going to make things real interesting for Dom coming up later on. Nine spare, nine spare for Jesper to begin this match. Our first strike a moment ago from Kyle. Tremendous experience, accomplishments overseas for Jesper Svensson. Wow, pin action everywhere, but somehow it doesn't get to the 10 pin. I don't know how. I mean, like, that's so not making any sense to anybody watching this telecast as to how this ball doesn't strike. And this is his third consecutive nine count first ball. I mean, how does this 10 pin stand up? He gave that one all of the business too. <laughs> uh, you know, his rev rate gets up around that 600 range on occasion. That's wild that, uh, that nothing, everything avoided the 10 there. The one trouble with throwing urethane sometimes on the 44 yeah, footers is he, it's hard <laughs> to get it to tip as much as he wants. Now, Jesper doesn't play nearly as much down lane reaction as Jacob does, but. It's hot. I need to breathe. <laughs> Registration for the inaugural 2023 PBA LBC National Championships now open to all bowlers of all skill levels from all centers this summer in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, right here. You can compete in singles as well as optional doubles and team events. You can combine your scores with the pros. Enter today at PBA.com. Yes, we're using one of two new racks available in our match here. And this Jacob you're referring to, I'm, I'm assuming it's Jacob Buttruff. Yeah, Buttruff. Everybody thinks these two, because they're left-handed and they throw urethane, they both at the same time. But Jacob plays hook. Jesper plays hold. Uses a ton of speed and gets it going up the lane. He'll get one of these to tip the right way, and then it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn into a six-bagger. Maybe right here, CB. Let's find out. Okay. That looked like his weakest shot in terms of where it <laughs> struck the one-two, and it strikes. This game makes no sense to me. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Worst shot of the game for him. Uh, lightest in the pocket by far. This time, they all run, <laughs> run into each other. Head pin off the wall, into the six, into the five. The old Dick Weber wall shot from uh, well before either one of us were around. We'll see now if Kyle can answer his chance to take a little bit more substantial lead. Double here to go up 11, Chris. Got it. 
You know, I think the one thing that Kyle's really good at, guys, is recognizing his ball motion. And it looks to me as though after leaving nine spare, nine spare, both 10 pins, the first two frames, Kyle kind of dialed the speed down a little bit to get the ball to come around the corner. I think he's really excelled in that area. And that's obviously attributed to some of the great success he's had the last couple of years. I watched his body language after the first shot too. He felt like he kind of got, got around a little bit. To motion that his elbow got outside. Those two have both been right through the middle of it, rolling it forward. You said just dialing it in, getting a little comfortable. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And just a little out of the break point. You see right there those numbers. Pretty good at the arrows, but a little wider down lane. No wins for Kyle yet on tour this season. I told us pre-show, he feels like his game is exactly where he wants it to be. Oh, well, been close to TV, but not on the bright lights yet. Ten pin there. So Pretty strong test conversion. this week with the, the three different patterns of the World Series, the short, the medium, medium long, and the really long and uh, the angles of attack, and he's, he showed up throughout that. Uh, just missing the top 12, unfortunately, uh, last game to miss by a few pins. Field is set for the Cheetah, Scorpion, and Shark. World Championship still 12 more games of bowling coming up Thursday. Yes, Burr. Uh -oh. Like you said, Chris. <laughs> Uh-oh. He's just thawing out. <laughs> well, he's got a couple off hits now. Got his legs underneath him, posting up shots. I would expect this next one to get a little higher flush. If it doesn't ring seven, the ice man is coming. Heard a guy say that once. I think he's even more intimidating with a beard, guys, this year. I mean, that thing is formidable. Whoa. So is his game. Whoa, wait, Whoa. wait, wait. Hang on a minute. Wait, look at these numbers here. One of the best, one, one of the best. best. Holy smokes. Whoa. Well, Chris said it best. The Iceman has come. He's working on three in a row, and he's got the lead here in our second match. It's the world versus the USA. Still more to come. Stay with us. Two troops fence it head to head. Simonson Belmonte. Barrett Tackett still to come here in suburban Milwaukee. Opening up the 14th guaranteed rate World Series of bowling here on Fox. Troop down 10, works on a spare, out of the break. Crunch time. Big shot right lane. Avoids a split, 10 pin stands. Wait, was that almost the 410? Pocket 410? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's some funny, some funny hits on that right lane. Yeah. Uh, certainly something to watch for. I used to leave that a lot back oh. in my day, said me never. <laughs> <laughs> well, the speed yours is going down there. It didn't get out of left gutter very often. Oh, oh, we're going to go there. Okay. 10 pin <laughs> coming up next, guys. Pro football back of the SFL kickoff weekend. The season opener begins with Philadelphia battling Memphis. Then in primetime, New Jersey takes on Birmingham, the defending champs. The SFL season kicks off next right here on Fox. Birmingham Stallions 9-1 last year. Beat Philadelphia in the championship game. So it's a north-south matchup. Eight teams. USFL is back in 2023 on Fox. So it's a great time for football. I love football, Chris. You're right. Is there ever a bad Anytime. time for football? No. I want to watch it. Oh. Needs to get it started here. Oh. Yes, we're going to get away. Man. Oh, good Lord. Man. Yeah. I mean, all you got to do is hit 7 8. Well, you see the number there, 5 5, and Kyle said all you have to do is hit 7 8, and you strike, and 
And that's why he's a bit disgusted with this last shot, leaving that quitter 10. And it did get to it, but it got there about three feet late. Agreed. He's trying to get to it earlier this spot, you know, go through some of that path that Sam and Tom and, and Tommy went through so that it picks up and gets some momentum getting back uphill. So, so Chris, I know you know a lot about leaving week 10s. What kind of adjustment <laughs> do you think Kyle should make? <laughs> I am an expert. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, he, he, well, he pointed out his own thing. He needs to either get a little softer, he can catch it a little bit more, or he's got to get it to the right or find a new partner to talk with. I'm not sure. All right, guys, it's for a four-bagger. 22-pin <laughs> lead. Yes, we're trying to stay high. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, baby. I mean, Chris called it. <laughs> he called it. Tattoos the one-two pocket. Those pins had no chance. The yeah. Iceman's starting to get frosty, Chris. Yeah, and that's a four-bagger, and that's the first one that's gone flush. And now he's got his feet underneath him. He knows what he can do on this left lane because he's basically tested every parameter possible and hit the pocket <laughs> on both of them. Um, <laughs> Here comes a five-bagger potentially for a 32-pin late. Oh. Eight frame. Oh. Ice man trying to stay high. Help! No, oh, across the deck, no seven pin. Wow. How rude. <laughs> a bit. A bit. The ideal line evidently wasn't the one at 14 from the shot before. This is where the guys get mad at the left-handers. Uh, <laughs> now he throws one way better. This is way more intentional. I thought that was going to be a no-doubter. Yeah. And uh, the bowling gods have a way of evening things out sometimes. Like a layup for players this level. Seven pin, single pin, spare conversion. No worries there for Jasper. I'm sorry, what? It's like a layup, like a slam dunk. You know, 93. That, that, you mean the seven pin spare attempt? Single, yeah, it's with 93 uh, percent. Um, I would say the five pins a bit more of a layup. Okay. Depends on who's defending, I think. Now, I don't even want to go to a, <laughs> no. a tournament of champions <laughs> whiff on hey. the five pin. Oh. But yeah, I mean, you gotta pay. You gotta pay some respect to the corners. Trigger one. True. Okay. Oh, oh, so not a better result though. Stood. That lane looks like it's getting down. a little lazier down lane than the other one. It, it just looks like a lot of angle, doesn't it? I think that's where guys start chasing on chasing each other a little bit, and he's gotten himself deeper than he needs to be. And uh, early in the game, his speed was really good, and he was able to get started. And he, but. You know, according to strike track, it's exactly the same. So it, it's balls just starting to pick up a little sooner and wearing out a little more down lane. Or he's not catching as well. But I don't think that's the case. That's normally not how it goes. Those guys get comfortable. Uh, you know, and Dave Ryan being left-handed, I wonder if he's really enjoying the fact that Kyle Troop has left not one but six ten pins oh. through eight frames. Six! Against the southpaw. Only strikes for Troop in frames three and four. It's been it for the whole match. Otherwise, nine spare. There it is. And, and here's a ball change. And yep. something that I think, Chris, he needs to go to something that'll come around the corner a little harder. And that's what he's gone to. You see, too, it's cleaner cover. Uh, should be a little sharper off the end, but that's way in. Wow. Way high. He didn't trust line, it to pick up that time. And that's just human nature. Or you, could, you don't trust the fact that it's going to pick up when you throw it to the right because it's cleaner cover. Never get into the spot. Yeah. He covers the foundation frame. But time's running out for Kyle in this match. Already Team USA down 1-0. One, one point with Cooley beating Tommy Jones in the opening match, 214-200. Guess the nice part for Tommy Jones is you still have uh, EJ Tackett and Anthony Simonson coming, but mm. uh, Belmonte's waiting on the other side. Talk about a couple. Along of, with Dom Barrett. Talk about a couple bullies waiting for you. Nothing but heavyweights here yes, in this one. Seven pins down. He's in the wrong spot. You just go back to <laughs> White Shaker. His best shots get nine. Ah. I mean, this is just like a corner pin festival yeah. going on right now for both players. I mean, Jesper Svensson, a couple of ten pins, seven pin here on this shot. We all know what caused them with the ten pin. 
And I think the players collectively have missed the pocket once this game. Hear that ball hitting the, uh, the finger holes all the way down there. Adding proof to the fact you can't hook while it's in the air. And especially when it's plastic, that helps. <laughs> Doesn't hurt a thing. So the 10th frame, guys, looking pretty good here for Jesper, despite the fact that Kyle may be with no re-racks last year. Kyle might have uh, forced a couple Uber rides yeah. for Rumor, Jesper. Room, kind rumor of has the business. It. Rumor has it, he made him drive, get an Uber himself back to the hotel yesterday and back times. to the bowl this morning. <laughs> so uh, little gamesmanship for his roommate. This probably isn't improving Jesper's chances for a ride today. Also some talk at the Holler House captain's match about some cooking. Oh, he's not here. Got eight. Yeah, he needs one of these two. All right. And we'll wrap it up. Uh, Kyle said, yeah, maybe I'll uh, throw something in his breakfast to slow him down. Right? I don't think that happened, but one. Gonna be another win for Jesper here against his buddy. Right. <laughs> My math though. <laughs> International Series domination for Svensson over troops going to continue here on U.S. soil. Got a both, got a win. Yes, for Svensson beats Kyle Troop. And the world team has a 2 nothing lead on yeah. Team USA here. Oh, it's suburban Milwaukee. And guys, coming up, we have got two heavy hitters. Anthony Simonson with five majors. Jason Belmonte with a record 15 majors. They go head to head next. Our last time we saw USA versus the World guys 2019. Anthony Simonson had a big shot. Bill O'Neill, Jason Belmonte, you see the captains of legends watching. Marshall Holman, Team USA. Sam Cooley stepped up. DJ tacking the roll off in Allen Park. Comes up short. Team USA comes up short. The world wins it. Jason Belmonte steps up himself. And the winning shot with nine. Wins the roll off and wins. USA versus the world, 2-0 in that format. It's different now for Hall of Fame captain Amleto Monticelli. USA versus the world, final round tomorrow, noon Eastern here. FS1 tomorrow, streaming on the Fox Sports app as well. It's a guaranteed rate PBA World Series of bowling. Rolls on, day two, still plenty of time for Team USA to catch and surpass the world team. Cooley beat TJ 214-200, and then Svensson 220-210 with his win in match number two. The total pinfall is important. It's 434-410 right now for the world team. Today, the current best of the world competing on the lanes, but who would some of the PBA pros put on an all-time dream team using any pros from any era? Kimberly Pressler gets the answers on today's pressing questions presented by Go Bowling. Wes, if you could put your dream team together of four players, who would they be? First, I have to go with probably Parker Bone. The reason being, he's a guy I looked up to when I was a kid. Secondly, who else? Norm Duke. Third, Tommy Jones, great friend. And then lastly, I mean, I crossed with him this week, Jason Belmonte. Uh, Parker Bone, um, Belmo, obviously. Uh, Earl Anthony and then Robert Smith, I think are like my my four. Not because they're like the best ever. I mean, obviously Earl and, and Belmo, but I, I think of it as like exciting to watch. You gotta put Belmo on it for a lot of reasons. The major championships, how good he has been in the situations for his whole career. Walter Ray, same thing. He's been great in the situation. Norm Duke and probably I'd probably take Pete on there as well. How come you didn't put yourself on the list? Well, I'm not seasoned enough yet. All right, Anthony, if you could put together your dream team of four players, who would they be? Uh, is it too arrogant if I say me times four? Simo, Dom, Norm, and I. Why? I think we just have a good time. Uh, Jason Belmonte would have to go in there. Um, Anthony Simonson. Um, 
Pete Weber, and Norm Duke. Yes, for Svensson, best lefty on tour. Uh, two, Anthony Simonson, most talented bowler on tour. And uh, let's go old school. Let's get Guppy back on the lanes. Yeah, and then myself. It'd be a fun duo. As we take a look at Simo and Belmo coming up, Chris, I noticed that you and I were not mentioned in that piece. <laughs> we got skipped over, ironically. I think you should have been, guys. I mean, a couple Hall of Famers next, but here are the booth. Can't wait for two future Hall of Famers head to head here. It's Simo and Belmo on Fox. You want to have a conversation about the best in the world? Two-handed brilliance on the lanes. Adds to his legacy. A taste for showing up when it matters most. Gotta have a strike. Has it. When it's all said and done, the conversation might just be the two best of all time. Here is the match of the day. Two sensational two-handers. Simonson, Belmonte guys, head to head. This is going to be awesome. This is the one everybody's been talking about since Tommy called out Anthony Simonson's name and Belmonte said, I want him. Guys, this is Ali Frazier. I mean, come on. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Five-time major champ gets us started. All right, he'll take it. And he is way in. Don't, <laughs> don't, look, don't look at me like that, Chris. <laughs> the incredible accomplishments of one Jason Belmonte. The two-hander from down under. Seven-time Chris Schenkel, PBA player of the year. A major champion again this year. TOC in... Suburban Akron. Right lane for Belmo. Wow. That looked good. Well, that is way right of where Simon Simo is. 16 boards right at the laydown. As you can see here, tail of the tape. Age at the fifth major win is one of the more interesting stats when you're comparing these guys long term. Simo got there four years younger. Now can he win the other 10 in between now and then? How about Belmonte's 16 boards right of Simonson on, on that shot he threw on the right lane? Left right here, guys. Oh, good shot, 10 pin stands. 19.2 miles an hour at a rev rate that I am unfamiliar with at 530 RPMs. Uh, Jason Belmonte is bringing the steamroller. Simonson curving the whole lane. Well, back 10 years ago or so, he took the hop out of his out of the approach, but it took away a little bit of the top end of his ball speed. And so oh, it made him repeat better that was pretty and good. speed control got better. But the knock was, hey, he doesn't throw it really hard. He doesn't play it straight. This year, he's worked really hard at adding that in. 26 years old, now lives in Las Vegas. Youngest to win one, two, three, four, and now five <laughs> majors in his incredible career. We talked to him pre-match about that. He said, I never dreamt as a kid I would do what I've done. This is Arsenal at this age. Simonson with a phase five as his choice and a great start for Simonson. You know, I mean, what he has done at such a young age, I think, is even more incredible in today's game because I think the talent level is stronger. Well, certainly power is has been a huge part of the successful guys in the last decade. And Simo's actually a little less rev rate than Tommy Jones, even though he's two handed. Now, what he does have. In my opinion, he's the most versatile player in the world. And I don't mean now, I mean ever. He's one wow. throwing it back up. He can throw the, his rev rate 70 less than Belmo and he's 16 left of it. 
The up three down here for Simonson. That's quite a statement, Chris. Your own story of the game. That's a nice way of calling me old, and I have seen quite a few guys. But he can do literally, as I cross with him different weeks, there's like, well, he can play as straight as anyone. He'll yeah. throw plastic to make a show a couple of days ago on the 48-footer. Belmonte's arsenal there. Reality check. So basically, basically what you're saying is Simonson has a very big toolbox. It's a, it's a cobalt tool chest that he carries around. Great <laughs> here for Belmont on the right lane. Hmm. All right, so so Chris, uh, we've watched the right-handers and how they're playing this pair, and typically what we see is the, they'll start in a certain zone and then they'll migrate in off of that because typically when the lanes break down, players chase towards the, the middle part of the lane to find some more oil. Yeah. Belmont is playing him exactly the opposite of that. Do you agree with his strategy? It, it, it looks like both these guys went bipolar on us. If I was in the guess, right. Simo tends to go and default. He knows he's fantastic at keeping it in front of him and putting it online, and that's his go-to if he doesn't have tremendous bar reaction, does it all the time on TV, off TV to make shows. Belmonte goes to the left gutter gap because he's the best in the world from that spot, getting it off five, six, seven, which is exactly what we're doing now. And these two guys have chosen the opposite thing. There's a strike, Belmonte. He's nine and five all time, head to head with Simonson on TV, including the last three matchups, two of which came in this building last year at the World Series of Bowling. Hey, that's the beauty here by Jason Belmonte, the winningest player in major championship history. I, I, you know, they counted him out, tournament of champions. He was like in 50-something <laughs> after round one. He was in 50-something after round two, and then he wins. Simonson. Stays perfect. Trip four, Pan. Well, if this guy hadn't have seen Belmonte in so many of those title matches, he'd have a lot more than five majors right now. So I'll tell you what, nothing better than hot dogs, apple pie, and a trip four if you're a right-hander. <laughs> Beer frame sponsored by Pabst Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, right where you're here. This great bowling area. Ask for the original and please drink responsibly. They did meet at the TOC match three this year. Of course, Belmont won on route to the title. Whoa! Okay. Almost the dreaded 710, just the seven pin up. That's a lot easier. Don't even think about it, you filthy animal. Good break there, trip of the 10 late for Simonson. And he should have no problem covering the seven pin and maintaining his big lead against Belmonte early. This place would have erupted with the PBR chant if that had been the scout 10 for the five bagger. But Chris, you've you pulled a long time on tour uh, and, and you've seen you've seen pretty much everything you've bowled all over the world. I mean, what Simonson has done in his young career is that Maybe the most impressive you've seen in the sport? Man, there's so many guys, but he's done it at such a young age, which is the scariest part, is he has this enormous toolbox, and when you're that versatile, you, you can last for a while. Here's Bobo, guys. All right. How amazing is this guy is the best guy at hooking in the world, and now he's playing straighter than everyone else on the show. Yeah. And other than one little funny shot on this, right, on this jump. right lane last time, made an adjustment here, it looks like. And he's right back in this match. A little more up the back, a little more forward roll that helps to keep the ball on line. And Belmonte now one more strike, and he could cut the deficit to 11. Yeah, according to strike track, just a little one-and-one -one move off the two pin. Pretty standard issue. Six frame here, guys. Big oh. shots. See the max scores. We'd have a fantastic finish. Allegedly, that makes him the second two-hander to move right at any point in any match. You cut to 11. You bet. Perfect. You knew Jason Belmonte would show up in a big match like this. 
The world versus Team USA. Randy, only 11 pins separates these two greats. Two of the biggest names in the sport going at it here just outside of Milwaukee. Come back and join us for the rest of this great matchup. The online graphics you see today, including the ball tracer, courtesy of Clutch Bowling, looking awesome as always. Hey guys, you know what? They call you when you're really good under pressure. Clutch. Clutch. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Randy. <laughs> He's Randy Peterson, the Hall of Famer. Chris Barnes, Hall of Famer as well here. It's Dave Ryan along with Kimberly Presser, a great crew. Starting off the World Series of Bowling, presented by Guaranteed Rate. In style, with sensational. Singles matches. Simonson. Wow. Ten, ten pin just got sent to the blue tent after the six pin just snapped it out. Tomorrow, the NASCAR Cup Series is on FS1 with some short track racing at the paperclip in Martinsville. The three race kicks things off at 2 o'clock Eastern. The green flag at 3 Eastern, only on FS1 on the Fox Sports app. Brought on cue, took a three minute break, so just moved, uh, just moved two. Two left, Corey and friends there at strike track. Snappy. And uh, made it snap back out there. He snapped that 10 out like Chris Barnes with a 16 pounder. Sad to hear you put the 16-pounders away, Chris. For a 21-pin lead, guys, there it is for Sarmo. Maybe if we had knocked a few of those, more of those out, we'd have been on somebody's list earlier. Two great shots coming out of the break. You're Tommy Jones. It's one of the toughest shots to throw in bowling is after that, after that commercial break. Bang, bang. Keeps his lead. Now it's turned back on. This generation's greatest player for sure. Arguably the best one of all time. I mean, that's exactly what you want to do, though. You come out of commercial break, your opponent just threw three in a row, and you got to get right back on it. Looks for a four pounder, got it! Back to 11. A strike here cuts it to one to the eighth frame. We're looking at a great finish here, guys. You know, I don't know. I, I can't remember how long ago it was, but Jason Belmonte Don't made the comment. Take my second rear, right? as he's going to take another rewreck. Jason Belmonte made the comment about Anthony Simonson that after Jason, Simonson would, would be carrying the torch. Did he also say it about EJ? He just said EJ's there each and every week, but he did say Simonson was going to carry the torch. Belmo uses final rewreck of the match. Wait, did you hear something I didn't, Chris? No, I'm just. You're giving you me that any, look. You're giving you think, me that look again. You think any of that psychological? Little play. For the nickel, for the five bagger. You bet. He crushes the one-three pocket. It's a one-pin match. That shouldn't have happened. In a Simon Sands eight frame. And you heard him say right there that shouldn't have happened. That was a little inside of target. Yeah. And when you keep it. In and long, and that, that swing taste tucked in. Every once in a while, you get away with that. It wasn't quite as far in as Jesper's earlier, but the world has taken advantage of the hold way better than the USA team so far. Well, except for this guy. Point on the board yet. For the turkey, yes! Not so fast, my friend. Yes, sir. Back up by 11 pins is Simonson. Yeah, and uh, again, we have confirmation he has not only moved left, but slowed down. Let's take a look at how these two players are attacking the 44-foot Salvino oil pattern. Gomanti is the blue ball. You can see how much in front it is of Simonson's because of the ball speed. But the numbers couldn't be any more different especially when you look at location not only at the lay down but at the arrows as well Simonson left lane oh, looking for help on the 10 pin doesn't get it 
And Chris, first ball that I've seen Simonson throw where the ball actually starts to motion back to the pocket and quits. Yeah, it, got a, it labored a little bit that time. Maybe just a touch forward. I mean, that's really nitpicking, but uh, a little more forward rotation. Didn't make quite a sharp move. The last one just split the 8-9. That one uh, way more split the 5-6. Guys, we have a PAP six pack alert at Belmont Strikes here. A thousand dollars sponsored by PAP's Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please remember to drink responsibly. Well, hey, not only that, Belmont, you can get up now in ninth and tenth and win this. It's not an opportunity, not a guy you want to leave that opportunity to. For the tie, for the money. Yeah. Jeez. Holy, that's good. Here I was, like, kind of second-guessing the greatest player on the planet, going, well, you know, everybody else has moved in, migrated, chased that oil pattern. Not this guy. One more strike, he gets into the 260s, and he's going to win yet another point for the world. And how about that six-pack? Dave, you didn't make the sound. Come on. Is that six? <laughs> I don't know, but... Make sure it gets six in there. It's made a lot of fans at home happy. Belmo on fire now. A chance to close it out. For the win. Yeah. Got another one. I'm playing, I'm playing that hole. He is fantastic. Takes the lead in command. One more for the win. I one thought more. he was already in the 10th frame. I <laughs> All right, he struck in the ninth. He gets the first one in the tenth. He needs one more. We are now up to speed. Okay, I'm now up to speed. Simonson double and Plus. nine now if Belmonte converts. And Simonson will win the first point for Team USA. Wow, is this crazy? I Missed just a touch to right. Over. To me, off my eye, it looked like it was a touch fast, but uh, strike track doesn't lie. So it was, uh, it was just right a target. Whoa! Big mistake. I think. You missed it. I, I don't. I don't think Simons is missing the pocket. So. Sorry, boys. Double. Double and nine doesn't. Or double and eight. I don't think changes it. He gets the first two. Then this is a wrap. That's my. That's the hill I'll die on right there. Shocking miss for Belmonte. This guy's the, the most clutch player of this generation, in my opinion. So. So you're saying the two eight the attempt was wasn't a factor, it means nothing. Not to me. Okay. Gotta have a strike here. Simonson, a tie, it's no strike. Game over. That's it. That's it. And the world wins it. Belmo takes it on the bench. Cooley, Spencer, and now Belmonte have all won. And the world team is up three zip. The satisfying moment of the match, sponsored by Snickers. Nothing satisfies like a Snickers. Simonson had a chance. Shot. Again. Shot. I seems to throw yeah. so many good shots in that spot. Uh, can't believe that All one right. didn't uh, didn't strike there. Right. Well, that was kind of a roller coaster match, huh? One more singles match, fellows, to come. EJ Tackett, Dom Barron, the Dominator from Great Britain. EJ Tackett, a three-time winner on tour this year. The PBA on Fox is sponsored by Go Bowling. For friends and family fun, log on to GoBowling.com to find a center near you. My guaranteed rate. Want to move fast? With Same Day Mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as fast as one day to get you closing on the home of your dreams in just 10 days. Learn more at rate.com. And by Bolero. 
the number one place to bowl. Party and play with over 325 locations nationwide. Head to Bolero.com today to find a center near you. They're competing for the Hall of Fame Cup. And here at Bolero, Watosa outside Milwaukee. USA versus the world. The world is up 3-0 for singles matches, plus a bonus point for total pinfall, which the world has the advantage in now. 689, 654 through three matches. It is possible if Barrett beats Tackett. So pinfall goes the world's way. It'd be a 5-0 sweep through day one with doubles and Baker Bowling to come tomorrow on FS1 at noon Eastern. Oh, I saw it. Are you surprised, Chris? Shocked. Shocked at the end of that last match. Uh, I thought there was a chance he might not carry, but I certainly didn't think that would be the shot we would see here. Uh, lots of hopes rest right here with EJ. Could use a really, uh, not only a win, but a, a big win and, and try and save two points out of today. Huge year for Tackett. Huge start to the match with a strike on the left lane. Huge year. He had a great World Series of bowling. We're going to see him throughout next week. And Dom Barrett about to take the lanes. Here is his bio. The Dominator. Ten PBA titles. And what a turnaround for, for him, Chris. Uh, he was He was like he was like done for a couple of years and finally found his game again. <laughs> I don't think he was ever done, but Dom is a guy who never stops searching. Uh, he is looking to improve constantly. He changes weights to get different reactions, to get different swing planes, to shake things up in his game all the time. Uh, it, it, consummate student. But, but guys, look. Dom himself, and we take a look from behind a beautiful swing that comes just a little bit out and then tucks underneath him. But he said himself, I lost my swing direction. I couldn't find it at the, I couldn't find the bowling ball at the bottom of the swing. I had no idea what it was going to do. And he fought that for a couple of years. Yeah. And he moved in England to a place further out in the country. This guy liked to practice a lot. You now he's not close to a bowling center. And then COVID maybe? And COVID oh, no, no. happened, which added to it plus a young child he had to relearn how to balance a lot of those things bill o'neill went through some of the same things you know, once you find balance then that happens ej tackage you can see impressive accomplishments 19 tour titles already one of nine already to get some he's done some amazing things and now he's getting to throw his favorite ball that pin and shot he throws Where that thing all the time the 10 pin chris come on wow it's one of nine is a triple crown, by the way. Uh, but that uh, didn't come with any bonus pins here as the head pin goes in front. The six laying there in the gutter like it's your or my shot, Randy. And uh, I never got the head pin to come that well, far. Well, no, but it, same result, of course. Ten pin shot back, guys. U.S. Open, Shawnee Classic, Jackson Classic. Three wins for Tack of this year. He told us pre-match the tremendous start as the top seed finally Got that long-awaited victory to begin the year at the U.S. Open. That didn't bowl great. Springfield Classic won by Cooley, as you can see the arsenal the for EJ. Came back. Oklahoma was well, fantastic. Not for me last year, so they'll probably do it again. Not awesome in Wichita. One in Jackson. It needs to go again. Bowl well, he TLC and the Masters. Overall, he feels his A game has been on point almost every turn. He's been spot on. He's had a couple of tournaments where the first day he had a little hangover from the week before and uh, got off to slow starts. Almost made both of those finals and shows. It's not a fish they re -rack there, by the way. Yeah. That's a shot. Wow. Pound for pound, the, I think the most powerful strike ball on tour for a player that uses his thumb. I, I don't think he oh, has a rival in that category. Well, he's certainly no no disadvantage uh, at all from a rev rate standpoint, and he has seen it this year. He is really, his lines have been good. He's been able to create that shape on a lot of different patterns, lengths, oils, and surfaces uh, with virtually two or three different bowling balls where he just manipulates them nonstop. You That's never done. count this guy out. He's had a great start. 
I thought he would be in the middle of the traffic, all the extra play in the middle of the lane between Cooley, Dom, TJ, and then Simonson being arrows left, that he might be in a disadvantage and, and Tackett would have the advantage, but uh, Dom just being Dom, guy's a gritty competitor. He's gonna find a way. For the front four, left lane here. That's the target. And guys, no, no, sorry, Dave, no real blowouts in our first three matches, right? I mean, uh, match number one, 214, 200. Match number two, 220, 210. And then in our last match, 255, 244. So, I mean, they've been relatively tight. And we haven't seen a runaway yet. We'll put her coolly over TJ, right? Ready? Yes, sir. Yeah, really an even match. Spread, yeah, been all close. One open, right. you know, a, a 7-10 in the off. middle of a bunch of strikes in a tie game is the difference in the total pins right now. So, but EJ's going to have to kind of turn the tide. Momentum can be a really fickle friend. And uh, right now it's all going the world's way. 2016 Chris Schenkel Player of the Year on the PBA Tour. Leader <laughs> in earnings. And average this year, second to Simonson in points. That hurries back. Good pin action, good help on the seven pin. You, you know, back, if we were to go back in time when, you know, when you and I first started on the tour, <laughs> you know what the, the old guys would say about EJ Tackett? EJ good, Double fire down, bad. <laughs> that was your time on tour. So, I mean, just he's just so athletic and, and yeah. gets... I mean, 180% <laughs> out of a 140-pound body. It's amazing. Yeah, nobody his size has ever created that much power on ever. tour. Oh. Nice okay. target this time. 3, 6, 10 up. Got a chance for the lead. Big left right there. But, I mean, you know, you, you watch the PJ Tour and you watch some of these, these, these smaller players, these, these nice lean players, mm -hmm. and how far they hit it. And you're like, well, how, how in the heck? That's that's EJ Tackett. Yeah, lean, torque, flexibility, and super quick hands. Casey Point there down the line, 3610. By the way, he's a great golfer, right? Excellent golfer. He is. Played a little college golf. Yeah. And uh, he, he could move it. Hits, it hits it a <laughs> mile. But I mean, just it, watching his release, I mean, in that open hand a la Pete Weber at the finish. It's pretty incredible to watch, especially in person, but just an impressive physical game that EJ Tackett possesses. Fourth matchup, head to head all time. Strike for Dom, works on a spare in his fifth frame. The last matchup, he beat EJ 235-199, PBA Tour Finals in suburban Seattle. Randy, you and I call back group two last year. Yeah, I mean, you got to feel really good about the turnaround for Dom Barrett the last couple of years, winning another major, becoming a triple crown winner. Um, you know, he's one of the, the classiest guys out on this tour, and I mean, everybody loves Dom Barrett. And it's just great to see that kind of turnaround because, uh, you know, Chris, we've all been through those struggles, and, uh, and sometimes you don't come out on the other side. Yeah, I, I didn't really have that much doubt he would because he's such a hard worker. It wasn't going to go away without a, without a fight, and he's he's young, he's talented, he's got plenty of rev rate uh, for things that kind of felt like he was going to persevere. It was just once he balanced everything else in his life that he would get it he would get it right, and he's got a great support system. Ten pin there. Stats yeah. for Dom. Yeah, one of the things with Dom is he has left the most 10 pins of anyone on tour this year at 200. I'm sorry, the least amount of 10 pins on tour yeah. this year with 227, yeah. uh, but made the highest percentage. 98.2. That's, <laughs> That's pretty crazy. good on tour. Yeah, that'll do. Great stat. Great bowling here in suburban Milwaukee. The final singles match underway. Midway point, match four. It's been all the world team so far. A 3 0 lead on Team USA and potential for another point with total pinfall bonus point. Day one of the guaranteed rate World Series of Bowling here from suburban Milwaukee. EJ Tackett. Big strike in the sixth. 
Well, EJ trying to climb back in this. He can cut the deficit to two, and this is a beauty right here for EJ Tackett looking to double up right here in the seventh frame. And there's your max score. 257 for Tackett, 259 Don Barrett. Cut it to two, big shot. Oh yeah, much oh, better shot. Baby. Chris, he gave that one the business. Yeah, he didn't miss that one at all. And uh, except for that shot there in the fifth uh, on that lane, this has been a very well performed game by him. Pure as that into the one three pocket. <sighs> Not success overseas for Dom Barrett. Seventh frame works on a spare. Two pin lead. Perfect ball reaction. Coming up next right here on Fox, USFL kickoff weekend begins. Season opener, Philadelphia Stars, finalists last year, face the Memphis Showboats. Receiver Richard Davis, former star James Madison, the FCS level, another point of the Sun Belt. FBS football, Kevin Kugler and Mark Sanchez will have a call for you from Memphis. Stars, Showboats head-to-head. -head. Brady White, former Memphis star QB, is going to start that game for Memphis as well. Should be fun to watch. For a 12-pin lead. Four-pin. Chris, that left lane breaking down a little bit. Oh. Or according to strike track, it looked like it was a pretty good miss down lane. He ended up looking a little bit of a lay down right, and then uh, it, he just a, an odd error for someone whose footwork and things are so perfect. It looked like a little bit laid it down one right and was on target, but uh, it did, so then it didn't get as far right down lane as it should have. We're good. We're good. Eight frame tack it for the lead here. What that tells me is it's unlikely that he actually didn't walk the same way he normally walks. It's just that he came over the top of it a touch. A reminder through three matches, 689, 654. An advantage for the world team. Total pinfall today gets a bonus point. Attack it. No. Uh, looked fast, and it looked like it was a little elevated at the foul line. A little loft in that shot. Two, four, eight, guys. Really just a board left at the lay down according to strike track, but uh, everything else is the same. It did, it just didn't slow down because he laid it down a little further left. Like he meant to go ahead and go after it like he did on the left lane. He just didn't quite catch it all. Yeah, it never slowed down, so it never came around the corner. That Venom shot he likes to throw is not a super big core, so it's relying on him. It allows him to do a bunch of different things, but it'll also show your errors, too. Good thing to rely on, though, if you have to rely on EJ Tackett. Yeah. <laughs> it's working out pretty well. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go there. We've got a fantastic finish brewing here in our fourth match. Down five pins, foundation frame time. Big shot for EJ. Oh. No. EJ. Oh. Leaves the Greek church. Yeah, the numbers speak for themselves on that shot. Has a big miss left, and and then you hear EJ kind of scolding himself as he leaves that. And that lane does pick up a little bit. You saw him leave the three six ten earlier in, right. the, in the game. It, he just doesn't have that miss left on that lane. Well, how much of the shot prior? Do you think influenced that shot, Chris? Going light and then coming back and going high. Oh, 80, 80 to 85%. Okay. Whoa, and it's in the channel and leaves them all. And that's going to leave the mark. lead. And Barrett is firmly now in command of this match as EJ falls apart. Well, he felt he that the best way to cover or convert the Greek church was to try to slide the four pin over into the right cluster. That's why he went that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's certainly an argument to be made for that. Although uh, getting four there would have also forced Dom into, into really good count to uh, 
Oh, and open would have given an opportunity at this point. And open page right going for it was probably the only play. Whatever way you feel like you're going to make it. And, and there's a camp on both sides. That pretty much seals the deal for Dom Parrott and the world with a strike there in the ninth. He just needs eight pins in the tenth frame. They're going to sweep the U.S. in today's action. Parrott steps up, Parrott knocks him down. And a winner for the world team. And after a tough night last night where he was the first out to make the Shark Championship, no hangover, came right back out, took down the world number one. A sweep plus the total pinfall bonus. It is a five nothing lead. Eight points needed to win. And tomorrow, doubles and Baker team bowling. Noon Eastern on FS1, also streaming on the Fox Sports app. We wrap up. The World versus Team USA. A lot of work to do for the American side, but with more points available, there's still a chance for Team USA to rally and win. Barrett takes it. And what a day for the world team. Four matches up, four down. They sweep Team USA. It's a sweep for the world team. All five points available for them today, and they take it. Cooley, Svensson, Belmo, and Barrett all win, plus the total pinfall bonus point for a 5-0 lead. The captains again joined by Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, Dave. So, Tommy, not the way you expected today to go, but uh, you have tomorrow ahead of you. These were close matches, but what went wrong for you guys? The holler house the other night. We had to finish on the right lane every time, so... Uh... You know, that was, uh, I put us a little behind the eight ball the other night because the right lane is definitely uh, a little bit different than the left lane. And uh, so we got to figure it out and be better tomorrow. Well, you still have tomorrow. So how is it that you got you guys wipe the slate clean mentally and move forward? Uh, there's no remote to change what happened today, so we can't rewind it. So we just have to come in and, and you know, dig in and, and be whatever, get the USA chance going, and we'll, uh, we'll do our job. All right, good luck to you guys for tomorrow. Congratulations to your team back here, Jason. Uh, you guys walk in tomorrow, five to zero. How much does that take the pressure off of you guys? Well, there's still going to be pressure. We haven't won the, the championship just yet, but it definitely allows us to feel a little more free on the lanes. Really proud of the boys. They stepped up uh, each and every game, especially when it was getting a little bit tight. We managed to you know, throw some pretty clutch strikes at the end there. and. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to coming in and, and bowling with the boys again. Well, at the top of the show, you actually said that you thought that you guys were coming in as the underdog with a strong performance today. How much does that change the perspective going into tomorrow? Oh, no, I still feel we're the underdogs. I mean, uh, <laughs> whilst we did have a great day today, uh, look, on paper, look at the team that we're playing against. They're absolute superstars. And what we saw today you know, is no reflection to how they can compete on TV. So we are not going to come in here thinking that uh, it's easy. We're, we're definitely expecting a few more strikes. Well, there's still a lot of competition left. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers. All right, KP, thanks so much. So in the end, 928, 856, the total pinfall, the world over Team USA. They get that bonus point, guys. But nine points available tomorrow with doubles, Baker Bowling, Team USA, we'll see you at noon Eastern on FS1 tomorrow, could still rally, Randy, and win this thing. Hey, man, my, my uh, BS meter went off when Belmonte was giving you that that little spiel about the underdogs and this, any other. I mean, Barnsey and I talked about it in the open with you, Dave, on how the world's caught up. He said they're probably the favorites, but who would have thought that the U.S. would have gotten smoked with that team? You got Simonson and E.J. Tackett, you don't come away with a point. 
Yeah, I didn't think it would come out like this. Uh, they won all the close matches. They made all the big shots today when it mattered. They need to win at least one doubles match to guarantee a tie and a roll off. Uh, they'll have two, we'll wrap it up. Uh, USA has a big job in front of them and they're gonna need all of this crowd to get them to get them there. So you're talking about doubles and Baker Bowling. With all the bowlers we've seen here, Randy, today, how do you best preview what Team USA can do to rally? They've got to get things going tomorrow. I mean, they got to strike more. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I, you know, again, it, it, EJ Tackett, the hottest player this season, mm -hmm. Simonson right on his heels, right? And then, uh, I mean, it's not like Kyle Chu can't bowl. And Tommy Jones, <laughs> I mean, look at that team. Not one point. Yeah, I'm I shocked. I I they they, they got to they find something in those matches tomorrow that really gels and works for their team and get back in this and put some pressure back on the world. Our coverage of the Guaranteed Rate World Series of Boeing continues tomorrow on FS1, as we said. Noon Eastern, final round of USA versus the world. Maybe a big rally for Team USA. It's their only chance tomorrow. We'll find out from here in suburban Milwaukee. Coming up next on Fox, USFL, Philadelphia Stars take on the Memphis Showboats. Football is on the way. Opening week of the 2023 USFL season. Now for Randy Peterson. Chris Barnes, the Hall of Famers, and Kimberly Presser. And the entire crew, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Wauwatosa. You've been watching the PBA on Fox. What a day for the world team. Belmo, the captain and company, along with Don Barrett, sweep Team USA. Tomorrow, the Americans need a big rally to get a win.